you don't have enough time because GCSEs are in 25 days. So here's everything that you need to do over these next few weeks so you can still get your dream grades. Before I move on to the game changing tips, let me tell you what you shouldn't even think about doing over these crucial days. You shouldn't be making notes, absolutely not. Because the amount of precious time you're gonna burn by doing this is only gonna leave you regaining yourself after the exams. If you feel like you can't do well without making your own notes, well trust me, you can. Because the amount of free resources there are, is just unimaginable. Because you've got PMT notes and flashcards, you've got save my exam notes, subjects like sciences, and you've also got videos from YouTube that you can watch. The other thing that you don't wanna be doing over these next crucial days is worrying about starting late, because that's just gonna dream motivate you further. Take it from me, I wasn't able to make all my notes for French and English because I had to follow my strict plan, but I know that at least these notes are better than nothing. 75 days ago, I made the 100 day GCSE revision plan, which was the ideal way to revise. But seeing that there's only 25 days left, this is the most effective way to revise now, according to me. You've either started your revision, how much that is, or you're yet to start your revision. But regardless of that, I think you can still use this plan to your liking and advantage. So 25 days, right? Let's say hypothetically you take 10 subjects. That would mean you have two and a half days for every subject over the next 25 days. Now, the bad thing would be to just spend two and a half days at a time for one subject because you just get tired and you wouldn't want to do the next one. You want to space out those two and a half days evenly over these next weeks. So let's say I wanted to revise a subject like physics. What I would do is I'll give myself one and a half days worth of just revising content. I would just be scrim reading over the whole book, identify my weak points and then focusing on them. Then I would spend the next half day just doing exam practice. So that would just be doing PMT questions on my weak points and then doing a whole paper one and paper two from just one year, let's say 2019. So I've done and marked these papers. I would identify which topics I got the questions wrong from and on a piece of paper, I would write these questions down. Now, this is where you have the choice. You can either make Anki flashcards for the questions you got wrong, so you're confident with them, or you can spend the final half day just revising those content. Do you see how much effective revision you can get done for a big of a subject like physics in just 2.5 days? Because imagine doing this for all 10 of the subjects. That will take you from here all the way to here in just a matter of 25 days. Along with the big subjects, I took into account what you guys wanted a video for. Here's just the things that I've been doing for just some of my subjects. I kind of showed in my last video that for maths, I've started by writing down all the weak topics that tripped me up in the mock exam. And I've been revising them by using the CGP book, doing the maths genie hard questions and also watching videos. The plan is that after I've done all of this, I want to do all the topics that are listed in maths genie in chronological order, just doing the hard questions. But obviously with a short amount of time left for revising, I'm not going to do the easy grade one, two and three questions. What I definitely recommend is that even if you're not the best at maths, still try revising those grade nine topics because they're probably going to appear as the last few questions in the, each of the papers, it's going to be worth five or six marks. So even if you can pick up a few of those marks, it's still going to help you out a lot. English, I'll start with language first and I'll tell you that it's completely possible to get a grade nine even with like two and a half days of revision because I remember rising the night before for my language mark and I still managed to pull a nine. The key is knowing how to answer each question because for example for question two you have to really know about your language devices like juxtaposition, oxymorons, metaphors and all that. But for question three it's more about the structure so like any spatial shifts in the text and how the writer increases the tension for example through short sentences. You can basically get eight out of eight in both these questions by just watching how Mr. Salas and Mr. Everything English tell you how to answer these questions and speaking of Mr. Everything English I think having a pre-planned story for question five is an absolute game changer because time you save from not having to fully plan will mean that you can add all sorts of fancy stuff to your answers so you can get as close to 40 out of 40 as possible. For literature it's about the quality of the content that you learn as well as knowing how to write like a grade eight to nine essay and with a short amount of time left I think it's still good to give both of them half the time. You can learn how to write a top quality essay by reading model answers and watching videos online. Oh yeah and some of you guys want my flashcards for literature and I thought why not so if you want to get them then tell me emailing me it's in the description they're nothing too special just the top 10 quotes for each play Christmas Carol Macbeth and an inspector calls with some decent analysis and I think that if you want to increase the chances of getting a grade 8 or a 9 in English then you should revise poems as well because you're already going to be ahead of most people who just can't be bothered to revise with poems and obviously I'm revising poems by using CGP you can't really do much for unseen poetry but at least spending time with that will be much better than just spending all your time on the place. So computer science was such a popular subject because so many of you wanted to know how to do well in it. And honestly, I'm not the best, but I think I do have some idea on how to get at least a grade seven or above. The first thing you want to do for the theory paper is get your specification because you need to know what you're revising because there are some key differences between the exam boards like OCR and Excel. I think you should check out Isaac Computer Science because it's a great website since it tells you what topics you need to do for your exam boards. It also gives you a free workbook as well, like full of questions for your exam board. That That's the theory part of your revision done and that's 
pretty manageable but what really scares people is the coding part i think for coding it's really just about practicing so over these next few weeks just pay attention in class and get help from the people who are the best in coding and also just watch python tutorials on youtube for like the bits that are covered in our exam taking steps like downloading python and doing practice already puts you way ahead of so many people who just can't be bothered to revise with the subject so you've done all this revision to get to the final day the day before your exam on this day i genuinely wouldn't do so much because you've already given yourself a decent amount of revision for each subject so the most i'll probably do is quickly skim past the chapters and make sure that the bits i always used to forget are now finally starting to stick if you want to you can do some final exam questions on the morning of the exam and that's basically pretty much it if you follow everything i told you in this plan then i genuinely don't see why you can't bump a grade or two or maybe even three over these next 25 days i really hope that you stick with this plan and don't get distracted too much good luck with your revision and i'll hopefully catch you in the next one peace